All right. Shalom. What's good with it, fam? Shalom, grace and peace. All praises, all honor and glory go to the one and only Yahuwah, the Abba, his holy son, Yahushua HaMashiach, through the power of that Ruach HaKadosh, the life-giving spirit, the holy three, you already know. Well, today, folks, um, family, <laughs> thanks for clicking on another video. Uh, I'm praying you're having a blessed day. And uh, today, you know, we want to talk about um, something that we're going to do. It's uh, kind of like a part two to the uh, Israelite Christian history, the uh, Hebrew Christian history. Um, but we're going to focus on certain um, believers who were Israelite or have Jewish background. And, um, and we're going to see what they believe, what they did, their testimonies. And um, we're going to, you know, try to go through history. And uh, this is something that we'll do on the side because I also want to get back into some scripts. So uh, next video will probably be that. But um, I'm bringing out this history right now because I'm saying this is very crucial, especially within the nation of Israel and within uh, Christianity and within these other religions as well um, and, and other beliefs and mindsets. There's a lot of uh, fake history. And the truth is that history is very in-depth and a lot of us regurgitate what we see on social media or we quote um, a text or a source out of context. And it's um, important that we give the context when we quote sources. And it's important that we read the whole source because normally things is way, way deeper than it seems. Uh, check out that song with uh, me and the, and the brother uh, Bruce Spitter. Everything deeper than it seems, got a little deeper behind the scene. Like, you got to really search and seek things out um, so that you can judge things properly. Uh, according to the to, to you know Yahuwah gonna guide you and he gonna give you the truth the Ruach leads to all truth But uh, with anyway with that um, Grace and peace today. We're gonna talk about Saint Hegesippus um, The chronicler um, aka Hegesippus the Nazarene um, He was a Israelite Christian scholar matter of fact, let me get my notes All right. He was a Hebrew Christian scholar and historian chronicler, and um, he lived through 110 A.D. to 180 A.D. Um, he had a Hebrew Jewish background. He more he most likely was uh, in the, in you know temple worship, old covenant uh, worship, and then when Christ came, he uh, he switched over to uh, following Christ, His commandments, and worshiping Him. Um. He wrote uh, a book, a, a work that, that was in five books, actually. It was one book, but it was five. And in the ancient days, chapters was kind of called books as well. But um, it was called memoirs or, let me see, memoirs or uh, mem memodia. Memo I should have wrote that way more clear. My fire. But it's called memoirs. And um, it's against false doctrines, uh, false doctrines of certain Gnostic sects. Gnostics were um, were people. Gnostic, first off, means knowledge, and the reason why they called themselves the this is because um, turn this light on because uh, they believed that you had to have a certain type of wisdom and understanding in order to get um, into the kingdom or, and to be enlightened. Fully. Not really the kingdom because their beliefs was a little different on that. Um, Gnostics was not monolithic, so they all believed in different things, but you had certain sects. For example, you had the Valentinians, um, and then you had the uh, people who followed Simon Magus. They became Gnostics. The central beliefs of them, of their uh, system, was that uh, there was two gods who created the world, a lesser god and a higher god, and then it was the lesser god who created the earth or something like that. So, uh, called the Dibby Urge. Um, and then they believe in these eons, these angels who helped create the world as well. Um, so that's the Gnostic. Uh, Brother Saint Hegesippus, he wrote against them and refuted their doctrines. And you also had the followers of Marcion that he wrote against. Marcionites follow a man named Marcion who was a, um, 
a false teacher who came out of the Church of Rome, and when he uh, brought his doctrine to the Roman bishops, they was like, "This sound wild," and then they um, they exiled him in a sense from from the main body of believers because he didn't put down his doctrine. And what he did was he believed that um, there was two gods as well. Um, he believed it's kind of like a Gnostic sect. He believed that there was a um, evil God that made the Old Testament and then there was a good God who made the New Testament and he also believed Paul was the only apostle that you should follow so he took the books of uh, Paul and he made his own compilation and he took verses out and added verses in in order to fit what he was teaching um, he also was getting refuted by brother Saint Hegesippus the Hebrew Hebrew Christian uh, his date, the date of his birth and uh, death, is based off of our brother Eusebius of Caesarea, one of the uh, the best church historians ever. Um, it's based that Eusebius has said that Antioch, Ant, Antinosus, Antinosus had died in Hegesippus' time. Antinosus was a um, was a lover of um, the Emperor Hadrian. So he was like a celebrity at the time. So they know that Hegesippus lived during his time. Um, during his adventures, St. Hegesippus, he went to uh, the church in Corinth, and he also went to Rome during the time of Bishop Ancetus, or Pope Ancetus. Pope means uh, papas, or uh, like Abba, or father, uh, which is like a um, like spiritual father. But it's really the bishop. That's what the top, that's what the term is uh, supposed to mean. It's the bishop of the Roman Church, and uh, and he was writing during uh, Pope Eleutherius. I can't say these names. My fault, y'all. <laughs> uh, his works are lost. Memoirs you can't find the book anywhere, unfortunately, um, except eight passages. It's eight little clips of it that we find in other people's writings. For example, Eusebius, he uh, quotes memoirs, um, and he says that it's the five books of history and apostolic teaching, um, and the succession of bishops in, um, in uh, different cities. So it says, Hegesippus also was learned in Semitic languages, uh, which includes Hebrew, he could uh, quote the, the Old Testament and New Testament in Hebrew. So there was New Testament uh, writings in Hebrew. Some even speculate that Matthew was originally wrote in Hebrew. Um, and uh, Hebrew culture. He knew of heretical sects among Christians and Jews. So he knew who was teaching false doctrines amongst the believers of Christ. And he knew who was teaching false doctrines among uh, in the Jewish religion. <coughs> It says, um, he wrote about James' death, uh, Simeon's election as bishop, and about John going to Patmos during the Domitian persecution. Um, you have, um, he also talks about Clement's letter. So he, he knows Clement of, um, of Rome, first bishop of Rome. Um. And he also uh, says that he knows who wrote the Shepherd of Hermes. He says that it was a man, um, Bishop Pius the First or Pope Pius the First of Rome. His brother had wrote Shepherd of Hermes. He was a shepherd named Hermas, and he had visions. Um, and my last note is that his works was available until about the 1500s and 1600s, somewhere around this time. Um, we lost the works of our brother, ancient Hebrew. Saint Hegesippus, a believer in Christ. Um, and with that, I want to get some of the passages out. Um, this is in, recorded in Eusebius' book, but he's quoting um, out of Hegesippus' book. So this is some of the thought, the mindset of our ancient Hebrew believing ancestor. It says, and his words are as follows. And the church of Corinth continue in the true faith until Primus was bishop in Corinth. I conversed with them on my way to Rome, 
and abode with the Corinthians many days, during which we were mutually refreshed in the true doctrine. So we see Hegesippus, he was really about uh, true doctrine um, and, and making sure that the churches was established. And we know the church of Corinth from, um, from the scriptures, Paul uh, helped establish that church. So it was a man named Premis who became bishop and he was, he was uh, mixing up the true faith. But um, brothers that came down, they say, had to see this and refreshed them. And when I had come to Rome, I remained there until Anicetus, whose deacon was Eleutherus, and Antiseus was succeeded by Sotir, and he by Eleutherus. At every succession and at every city that is held, which is preached by the law and the prophets and the Lord. So we see um, this is a succession of bishops now. Um, this is how you follow timelines. When you know um, who was bishop of a certain time, do you know what certain, um, you know what time period you talk about when you bring them up, what era of the, uh, the church history, the history of the believers that we talking about. Um, so they were uh, heads of Roman church and then in every city, in um in the in Rome, uh, they had they own uh, churches with they own um, clergy and elders, but they all um, met up and unified under the bishop of Rome. And this is talking about just the Roman area. It's only talking about Rome right now, not the whole world. It says the same author also describes the beginnings of the heresies which arose in his time in the following words. James the Just has suffered martyrdom as the Lord had also on the same account. Simeon, the son of the Lord's uncle, Cleopas, was appointed the next bishop. All proposed him as second bishop because he was a cousin of the Lord. Therefore, they called the church a version where it was not yet corrupted by vain discourses. If you uh, watched my last video, we talked about Brother Simeon, so check that out. But Thubitus, because he was not made bishop, began to corrupt it. He also was sprung from the seven sects. Among the people like Simon, from whom came the Simeonians and Clebutus, who came the Cleboians. Excuse me, I'm, I'm not even about, I'm about to just say what I see. <laughs> Docetus, from whom came the Dissocians and the Mediterranean. So he's listing a bunch of heretical sects, though. You see, we got in the Marcianus and the uh, Carprocratians and the Valentinians. Those are Gnostic sects. And Basilides and the Saturnalians, which I think those, I think those last four were different Gnostics. It says, each introduced privately and separately his own peculiar opinion. From them came false Christs, false prophets, false apostles, who divided the unity of the church by corrupt doctrines uttered against Elohim and his Mashiach. See, uh, this is what I want to um, bring light to as well by bringing out these uh, this church history is that false doctrines and stuff was definitely not like tolerated back in the day by these ancient Christians and um, they fought against heresies and they fought to keep the unity of the body as it originally was because it was originally unified um, and it was it it. it it was unified, but then it start crumbling as the years go by. And Lord willing, if we continue this series, we'll go through all of those uh, crumbles in the unity. But um, it's because of false doctrines. At the end of the day, um, false prophets, false Christ, people with their um, own peculiar opinions, changing up the scripts. But let's continue. The same writer also records the ancient heresies which arose among the Jews. In the following words, there were moreover various opinions in the circumcision among the children of Israel. The following were those that were opposed to the tribe of Judah and the Christ, Essenes, Galileans, Hermobaptists, uh, what's that say, Maspotheans? I can't really see, I'm looking at the TV far away. Um, Samaritans, Sadducees, and Pharisees. 
So these is uh, considered uh, false teachers to our brother, our ancient brother. It says, uh, and he wrote of uh, many other matters, which we have in part already mentioned, introducing the account in the appropriate places. And from the Syriac, the Syriac gospel, which is Aramaic, according to the Hebrews, he quotes some passages in the Hebrew tongue, showing that he was a convert from the Hebrews. And he mentioned others and other matters as taken from the unwritten tradition of the Jews. So there we have um, one of the gospels being written in Hebrew. It was um, it was a couple of different gospels written in Hebrew, but the one that Hegesippus had, he was able to quote it. It says, and not only he, but also Irenaeus, who was another ancient uh, Christian that we uh, talked about in our last video, um, I believe. Uh, but if not, we'll get to him. And the whole company of the ancients called the Proverbs of Solomon all virtuous wisdom. And we can attest to that today, for sure. And when speaking of the books called Apocrypha, hey, the Apocrypha, he records that some of them were composed in his day by certain heretics. But let us now pass on to another. So that's something that we should uh, go into, um, you know. Uh, St. Hegesippus says that some of the books of the Apocrypha, uh, from his point of view, was written by heretics back in the day. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to see which ones he was talking about. But, uh, you know, it, we'll get to talking about canons and all that. But basically, the Apocrypha, um, you know, the, the Orthodox churches use it. Um, and uh, the Catholic churches used it. The Protestants took it out because the ancient Hebrews um, didn't didn't really read them. Um, but it's up to your 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 vibe, I feel, because um, I believe some of those books was in the Septuagint as well, which is what the apostles and everyone would have been reading. So it's up to you. Um, he says a man named Marcellina came to us lately and destroyed many in the days of Antiochus. So the Bishop of Rome so uh, you know they had to defend off of another false teacher um, Marcelina was was said to be either Marcion or um, a different teacher who uh, who was said to teach antinomian and antinomian means lawless which means you can do whatever you want and you'll get saved still um, con contrary to what I know I was taught Christians are not antinomian but they follow Christ. Um, I don't know why I couldn't see that beforehand, but I think it's because I was being told um, that they was antinomian by a bunch of people who, uh, who who really didn't know the history of it all, at all. But that's what we here to do, bring the history, bring truth in Yahushua's name. Praise y'all. Um, and yeah, with that, you know, that's that's pretty much it on St. Hegesippus. Um, he was a historian and he was adamant a uh, defender of the faith, fought against false doctrines. Um, and that uh, he was a cool brother. He went to Corinth, he went to Rome, and we don't have many of his works out, so we can't speak too much on um, what he believed um, personally, but we know that he agreed with um, the Orthodox understanding of the scriptures that's been passed down. So, uh, glory to Elohim. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about because I was talking to, about this with somebody else. This is just a side thing because I don't want to make a whole video. Though I, though I might, maybe with more detail. But uh, the term Christian, because I, I, I've, been, I've been using that to describe the New Covenant believers. And I know that term is not uh, used or liked among the um, Israelite community. But, you know, I want to uh, break boundaries and, um, and be able to have peace in areas where we don't have peace. Because for some reason, somebody has sold discord amongst our hearts and our minds concerning words. And um, that's not healthy, I feel, not spiritually, physically, or mentally. I believe that we should seek knowledge. And hating certain words or certain things will not allow you to get knowledge or put blockades. For example, I would have known none of this church history if... Um, if I was scared of words like church or, or Christian, or not really scared, but just biased against them. Um, but anyway, 
uh, the discussion we had was what the, the early believers call themselves. And uh, what I want to say with that is we know we in the scriptures, they they called it the way, right? Um, the, the way was, was one of the terms. Um, Jews called them Nazarenes. Um, and uh, Gentiles and other people, like uh, I believe Her uh, one of Herod called them uh, Christians. Um, after the term Christian was introduced, that name became one of the main names, but you also still had other names. For example, Jews, people in the, um, in the Old Testament still, in the Old Covenant, they still call, they call Christians Nazarene because they followed Jesus of Nazareth. And he wasn't the Mashiach to them, he was just a dude from Nazareth, so they said, y'all just follow a dude from Nazareth, so y'all Nazarene. Um, Christian me is taking up the name, which come from Christianos. Anos was the suffix, and you had these like Caesarianos, which is people who follow Caesar. Christianos was people who follow Christ, uh, Christ. Um, so that's where you had it come, come from. And um, and I wanted to read Josephus to, to show you that uh, he's an ancient Hebrew scholar. Um, he wasn't in the New Covenant. At least we don't know. He could have been, but um, he doesn't say. But it says, in Antiquities of the Jews, right? Antiquities of the Jews, book 18, chapter 3. Starting at verse uh, section three, I'll say section three. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received a troop of pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, so he could have been a new covenant. He just confessed right there. Uh, we're going to take it down a little bit, though. It says, As the divine prophets have foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him, and the tribe of Christians so named from him are not extinct at this day. So they were named after Christ. It just meant Christ. So um, I, I feel like it's a spirit. That, that's causing people to not like that word when it's, it doesn't mean anything but Christ. So we're going to talk about that in another video. And, um, and the brother, he, he had claimed that it was Nazarenes that they were called. And, and though, yeah, some of them were called Nazarenes as we spoke of in the, um, in the, first, in the first church history video. Some of the first century uh, Jews was called Nazarenes. Um, and some of the uh, first century Jewish Christians was called Nazarenes. But now what, what we also see, if we go deep into that, is that there were uh, multiple sects with the same name, Nazarene. Um, if you read uh, Epiphanius, I probably said his name all wrong, but he talks about two different sects of Nazarenes with two different sec uh, types of beliefs. And it's, it's super deep, but we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, grace and peace. Y'all bless you all. Um, I want to get into some scriptures next time. So let's do that. And um, and we also going to continue following the ancient Hebrew Christians. Uh, and I got some music I'm going to be dropping soon. Look out for Zion 964 coming soon. Um, and y'all stay blessed up, man. Stay uh, giving thanks. Stay uh, asking for grace. Because it's only through Yahuwah that we doing anything. Especially if it's good. And... Um, Give thanks to y'all for, for watching. Praise y'all. All esteem to Yahuwah, Bashin Yahusha, Baruch HaKadesh. We love you. Shalom. Praise y'all.